By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing a nice game of Swedish old school magic, The Gathering. And I am playing against Frank from the Netherlands. And we've actually challenged each other to build decks around specific cards. So I've got a brew, a red and green brew around the card Gaius Leech. And my opponent Frank has made a mono blue deck around the card Enchantment Alteration. Um, so in a moment I'm going to do the deck deck of both of these decks. I have deck photos so it's going to be pretty interesting. If you want to go straight to the games, no worries. You can check the timestamp below, click the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck deck starting with Frank's build, the Enchantment Alteration deck. And here we see the deck of Frank and let's take a look. I see a lot of blue flyers. As a matter of fact, you kind of call this a blue flyer aggro tempo deck. Uh, four Flying Men, two Zephyr Falcon, uh, four Surrender Pafrits, a Ghost Ship and an Air Elemental. So of course those um, Zephyr Falcons, Flying Men and Surrender Pafrits are all pretty much early game. He's also playing with four Mishra's Factories. So that means he wants to really, you know, play short games, maybe get into mid game and then finish it with a Psy Blast or with an Air Elemental. He's also playing with three Control Magics, which of course work together very well with the Enchantment Alteration. He can play them pretty aggressively. He can say early game, you know what, I'm just going to take over your small creature with my Control Magic. That means that you cannot block my threats, I can put in some extra damage. And if you play a better threat later in the game, I'm just going to play an Enchantment Alteration and switch targets. So that's, that's some nice synergy there. Uh, he's also playing with four Unstable Mutations. I think Unstable Mutation and Enchantment Alteration is actually a very valid and good combo. Um, because what happens is you can play um, Unstable Mutation in a way that the minus one minus one counter gets placed on the creature that it's on. And then you can change the target so you can stack it in that way. And that means that your new creature gets plus uh, three plus three and no minus one minus one counter yet. You know, so for example, if you, let's say you've put an unstable mutation on Flying Man and uh, there are already three minus one minus one counters on the Flying Man, then you know that in the next upkeep, the Flying Man is going to die because of the extra minus one minus one counter. So when that counter is being placed in response, you can play the enchantment alteration and then move the unstable mutation. And that means that the minus one minus one counter is still going to be placed on the flying man. So the flying man is going to die, but it was going to die regardless. So that doesn't matter. And then you can move your uh, unstable mutation to a better target, to a new target. For example, your surrender perfrit that's all of a sudden then becomes a six, seven flyer. So I, th I think there's really nice synergy there. Um, I also see two unsummons and two boomerangs. So that, that's kind of the tempo aspect of this deck as well. Interesting enough, he hasn't chosen to play, play with counter spells. But he probably knows that, you know, I'm going to expect counter spells, so maybe I'm going to play differently. And I think that's always an advantage when you're playing uh, a mono blue deck is that your opponent is always expecting a counter spell. And it's not always there or it's not always, there are not always as many counter spells as you might expect. So that's interesting. I also think it's good that he's included um, two books to draw some cards because this does look like a deck that you can run out of cards very quickly and then you really need your books if you reach mid game to kind of refill your hand and get your threats back. Also Brain Geyser could be a crucial, could play a crucial part in that. Um, I really like the control artifacts by the way. I think it's going to do really well against my deck because I'm playing with some pretty strong artifacts. So he's going to like that. Unfortunately, he cannot use the enchantment alteration on the steel artifact. So that's still, you know, I'm kind of bummed out. I'm, I just I'm, I noticed while I'm talking about enchantment alteration, I'm bummed out that you cannot just play it on any uh, that you cannot just change the target of any enchantment. Anyway, this is uh, Frank's deck. It's blue enchantments. Let's take a look at my brew. And this is the deck that I am playing with today, and it's built around Gaius Leech. Now for the people that don't know, Gaius Leech is a green creature for three green and three, and it has power and toughness equal to the amount of forests you control. So let's say I'm having four forests in the game, then it is a four four. Now when I attack, it changes its power and toughness to the amount of forests that my opponent controls. So if my opponent controls zero forests, it's actually gonna change into a zero zero and kill itself. But that's not the most interesting part of this card. The most interesting part is I can tap it, and I can change any land into a basic forest. And I need to put a counter on there to mark that change. And when Gaius Leech leaves play, 
all the changed lands return to their original form. So if I have multiple Gaius leeches, I need to make sure I use different counters to show what Gaius leech has turned what land into a forest. So as you can imagine, this can lead to some pretty complicated gameplay. Um, now, when we look at the rest of the deck, um, some people will notice that I've added red because this brew was on the channel a few weeks ago and then it was still a mono green deck. So what I've done, I've added red because of the lightning bolts and the earthquake. I just felt like I really needed some more solid removal, especially early game against aggressive decks. And lightning bolt is just ideal. You know, if you have to face a hippie or, you know, face some white weenie or in this case, face flying men, uh, the lightning bolts are just ideal to kind of get rid of that early pressure. Also, they work great against aggressive mistress factories and they're going to give me some time to kind of build up because this deck is very mana hungry. And that's why I've chosen to uh, play with four Untamed Wilds. I think Untamed Wilds is a little bit of an underestimated card. Untamed Wilds is also allowing me to play with less red sources because it can just um, find my basic mountains with the Untamed Wilds. Uh, what it does, by the way, it's a card from Legends 1 Green and 2. It's a sorcery and it says look up target basic land, put it into play tapped. So uh, untapped, sorry. So basically it's uh, one green and one to cast because you're going to get that land back because it's going to come into play untapped. So you're going to be uh, ahead on your mana curve because of Untamed Wilds. You're going to be guaranteed to find the land that you need. Um, so overall, I think this, and it's actually going to buff my Gaius Leech power and toughness. So I think overall Untamed Wilds is a really good fit in this deck. And because my deck is so mana hungry, I thought, you know, why not? Let's put two Sheevan Dragons in there. There are only six mana. I'm going to generate so much mana anyway. I'm playing with four Birds of Paradise. I'm playing with the Untamed Wilds. You know, let's just do it. And for the same reason, I've added uh, two books to draw some cards. And also, I'm, I'm probably going to find a lot of land anyway. So I will have four mana available at my end step to just draw into extra cards. Another um, decision that I've made is to play with three Cockatrice. I've noticed that Cockatrice and let me know in the comments if you play with Cockatrice and what you think of this card, because I think it's slightly underestimated. If you have a deck that wants to buy time, Cockatrice is the perfect solution for that. It is a wall. Your opponent is not going to attack anymore until they have dealt with the Cockatrice. Because you don't want to trade your Sarah Angel for a Cockatrice. It just doesn't feel right, because you've got four power on the board, it's got Vigilance, and all of a sudden you've got to trade it for a 2-4 creature. So... You know, that's that's going to be interesting, especially in this matchup, by the way, where my opponent is playing with Surrender Befreed, which is only a 3-4. So a Surrender Befreed is even, it's really bad for my opponent here, because if he attacks with Surrender, I can block it on the Cockatrice, kill the Surrender, and my Cockatrice survives. So that's like really bad news. Um, when we kind of zoom in further uh, in the deck, two cards that I really like, and I used to play with playset when I started experimenting with my Gaius Leech Brew, are the uh, Instal Energy. So Instal Energy is an enchant creature for one green. And what it says, it says your creature gains haste. So that's interesting. So for example, if I play a Sheevan Dragon and then I have one green open for an Instal Energy, I just have a, a Sheevan Dragon with haste. So that's pretty cool. You just can attack straight away. Um, but what it says as well is that you can untap your creature one additional time during your own turn. So that means that if I play it on my Gaius Leech, I can tap it to create a forest on my opponent's side and then I can untap it to use it as a blocker. And then at the end of his end step, I can use it again. Or I can say I'm going to use it very aggressively and in one turn, I'm going to turn two of his lands into forests and maybe kind of uh, blocking him from playing out his spells because he doesn't have the right color mana. So that is definitely um, an option here. Now what I've noticed uh, in playtesting, that's the last thing I'm, I'm kind of going to share about this deck because I'm, I'm sure you want to see um, how this matchup is going to end up. But one of the things I've noticed during playtesting is that Gaius Leech, ramping out Gaius Leech, that doesn't really work, unfortunately, because Gaius Leech has power, uh, power and toughness equal to the amount of force. So let's say I've got a Soul Ring out, I've got Lanawer Elves out, I've got early game Birds of Paradise out, and I can play my Gaius Leech uh, turn two. You know, let, let's go crazy. Let's say turn two or turn three. Because I then hardly have any basic forests, my Gaius Leech is just going to be a 2-2, it's going to be a 3-3, and that means it's very vulnerable to removal. And I think that's one of the, of the biggest downsides of Gaius Leech. You know, it is 6 mana, but it doesn't always mean that you get a big, beefy creature for the 6 mana, especially when you attack with it, because then it has power and toughness equal to your opponent's 
um, forests. But I do think the, the, the upside is that Gaius Leech is, hey, A, it's a beautiful card, and B, I mean, it's got star, star, and power toughness, which I always like those creatures. They're very interesting. And C, it has a unique ability of changing any land, including your own, into a forest. So looking forward to see how that mechanic is going to help me. And um, yeah, I'm curious if I can kind of keep Frank at bay long enough, because he's more of the aggro player in this matchup, and I'm more of the mid-game, late-game player here. So my job is to draw this game into mid-game, late-game. Okay, enough rambling about the decks. Let's continue to the actual uh, game of Magic. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, and Frank is sitting on the right side, and I'm sitting on the left here, starting with a mountain. And he's starting with a Mishra's Factory into a Soul Rings. That's a pretty quick start for him. But not a Flying Man or any other threat. Look at that. I'm playing nothing passing turn here. I guess I took a gamble, hoping to find some land. And he's actually he's animating his Factory, I guess, attacking with the 2-2 in response. I'm playing a Lightning Bolt, taking care of that Mishra's Factory. Tapping 2 here. Okay. Got a Sylvan Library, so hopefully that's going to help me. So I found that forest. Took a bit of a risk, I guess. And there is a boomerang over my Sylvan Library. But I don't think it's ideal. What Frank wants to do is just deploy his threats. So Flying Man Surrounded Befreed. And there we see a Birds of Paradise and a Sylvan Library. So pretty good turn for me here. And there's a third island. He's got five mana. He's got to have a lot here. Maybe thinking about stealing that Birds of Paradise. And I think he can do that. If he has it, I think I would do it because he's got enchantment alterations later in the deck to, to move target anyway. And it's going to be difficult for me because my, my deck is so mana hungry. I just want a lot of mana. Uh, it looks like he's, he's really in the tank here. And tapping to playing a boomerang over my Sylvan Library again. So boomerang is going to buy him some time, but it's not ideal. Let's see what I can do. Tapping the Taiga. Okay, tapping to playing the Sylvan again. So playing it for the third time. And found a crumble. And in response, he's playing a Psyblast on me, actually. So I'm going to drop to 16. He's going to take two damage as well, dropping to 18. And, of course, the Soul Ring is gone. And he's going to gain a life from the Soul Ring, by the way. So he's going to go up to 19 again. So choosing to play the Crumble. Now, remember, we don't know each other's decks. So of course, we just saw the deck lists. But we don't know it while we were playing. So I have to kind of think, okay, if I can get him off... Five mana, he cannot play like an air elemental. If you get him off six mana, he cannot play a Mahamoti. We don't know from each other what we're playing. Looking at the first three cards with the Sylvan, deciding not to take an extra card here. Tapping for five, and there we see a Cockatrice. So this is the 2-4 Flyer. I talked a little bit about in the deck deck. I think it's very useful because it just buys you so much time. It's really a wall. But here is the Control Magic. So well-timed here from Fra Frank taking over my cockatrice but next turn maybe i can go into six mana and maybe i can then deploy a gaius leech playing with a full place at taking an extra card dropping to 12 tapping six here shivan dragon wow so this is even better for me got that shivan but actually you know frank has the perfect blocker for the shivan but he's going to use his enchantment alteration. <laughs> I mean, it's really nice to see this card in action. So that means he's going to take over the Shivan Dragon. And that's, I mean, that's an interesting choice. The problem is, of course, with Cockatrice, it's still, for me, it's still an ideal blocker. But, I mean, yeah, it's good to have a Shivan. He's playing against red and green, so he doesn't have to be afraid that I have any enchantment removal. Well, I guess I could play with Tranquility, but it's it's not in my main. Uh, I, play, I do believe I play it sideboard. Tapping to a double lightning bolt on my own Shivan Dragon. Wow, and that means that one control magic was good for three cards. So that's actually pretty nice here, Frank. One control magic got rid of a Shivan Dragon and two lightning bolts. Wow, that's powerful. I am swinging now for four. So that means... If he's going to take this damage, he's going to drop to 13. 
Playing a Psyblast over to Cockatrice. Taking two damage from the Psyblast and... I hope he's not forgetting to take the two damage from the factory as well. I think he still needs to add those two damage, but okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. He's on, on 17, it seems still. I'm on 12. Tapping five here. Ooh, Brain Geyser. This is very nice. Good timing here. Gonna draw three cards, play another island. Passing turn. And uh, you could probably hear the church bells in the background, by the way. I live very close to a church here in Amsterdam. I guess there's a surface. It's a Saturday. And look at that playing another cockatrice. Maybe there's a wedding. They usually do church bells when there's a wedding. And the cockatrice now on the battlefield. I think this, this creature is so annoying for Frank. Then again, I mean, he's, he's got plenty of life. It's only two power, so... It's not that big of a deal. Is he gonna... He's playing a flying man, finally finding something. And this is an interesting choice. Also playing the Surrender Pafrit. And maybe that is why he was thinking so long. Because the Surrender Pafrit, of course, is just not the best creature when you're facing a Cocturus. Cocturus being 2-4... Surrender Pafrit being a 3-4, and of course now he will have to start uh, taking damage from the Surrender as well. And here we go, we see Gaius Leech hitting the board, sweet. I don't think it's going to be very effective with all those basic islands that um, that Frank has, but hey, I, I, I can give it a try. At least it's a blocker, although, no, all these creatures fly. Okay, it's pretty worthless at this point in the game, but it's nice to see. Uh, one card, Unstable perhaps? Ah, interesting choice, you're playing the Unstable on the Flying Man. Attacking with both, and I think this is kind of a mistake here from Frank. Maybe he's forgotten the Power of Toughness? Because he wants, ah, I remember this, he wants to trade, and then they told him, ah, sorry man, he's got four Toughness. And he's like, okay, my bad, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Because I think it would have been completely different if it would have played the Unstable on the Surrender Perfrit and would have attacked. And I probably would have had to trade those. And now I can swing in. Look at that. Look at my army here. I'm actually not, not doing that. Okay, interesting. I'm actually choosing to look up a forest. I think this is... I'm, I mean, I'm not sure what I've got in my hand, but... Oh, I want to play out the Icy Manipulator to tap down his Flying Man. Okay, okay. So I'm really going for the more defensive approach. I I am on 8 life, of course. So it kind of makes sense. And he's going to get his bag of counters. Um, Frank now being on 14. I do kind of feel that we would have had a completely different game without that um, misplay with the Surrender Perfrit, but... You know, I do, I do understand, um, you know, Frank's point of view who said, you know what, I made a mistake, uh, this is it. Because I always, I usually say, you know, if you want to take it back, it's fine when you make these, these sort of things. Uh, I make these mistakes all the time, by the way. Uh, but let's see, let's see if Frank can still make it again. I mean, I'm on 8, he's on 14, so if he can find the right cards. Playing a strip mine here, I mean, he could... He could take care of one of the factories, I guess. He doesn't have to do it right now. Interesting thing, by the way, about um, Gas Leech, a really creative way of killing Gas Leech is um, destroying all my forests that I haven't played, and then my Gas Leech will drop to 0-0. Zero, zero. So right now, for example, my Taiga counts also as a forest, and I've got three basic forests, so the Gas Leech is now 4-4. Four, four. So if he would take care of all those four forests, then my uh, Gas Leech dies. Oh, nice! This is pretty cool. He's taking over a steel artifact on my uh, IC manipulator. Very nice play, Frank. I, you know, I, I like, I, uh, I really like steel artifact. You don't see it often. And as you can see, I'm changing one of his islands into a forest, the one that has that counter on it. Um, and I guess I'm doubting whether or not I want to attack. Yeah, I'm declaring attacks. The Icy Manipulator is tapped, so he's taking 4 damage. Dropping to 10, and I'm playing another Icy. Ay, ay, ay. That's a little bit unfortunate here for Frank. And we're playing Icy versus Icy. 
I always find that tiring. Ooh, another steel artifact. Nice. Oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, no. So I'm using my one IC to tap the other IC, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Really, really, really nice here, Frank. Stealing both of my IC manipulators. To be honest, I thought the game was kind of played after you lost your surrender, but all these steel artifacts are changing, changing the game. And I actually thought when I when I when I found that IC, I'm like, okay, I can take care of the IC you stole from me, and then it's even. But now instead of canceling out your IC, I've given you an extra IC manipulator. Wow. Attacking now with the 2-2 Flying Man, dropping to 6 life here. I mean, I've got to worry. Oh, man. And this is the thing with Gaius Leech. Gaius Leech is a 6 mana, but it doesn't mean I can deal a lot of damage to my opponent. Um, animating the factory. Actually, just keep attacking, keep swinging in, knowing that the Flying Man will actually drop to just 1. And, of course, he now still has his Icy Manipulator tapped. Now that game is over for me because he can untap all his icy manipulators. That means that next turn, he can really start tapping down my army. Uh, but do look at that flying man. Um, it now is three minus one minus one counter. So that means next turn is gonna die. And what Frank really needs is just another creature and maybe an enchantment alteration to switch the unstable on a new creature. Unfortunately, he is top decking at the moment. So this is just the one card that he has. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still going to be tricky for him next turn. He can tap down some creatures, making sure he doesn't take any damage. Another thing with Gaius Leech is he can tap down my Gaius Leech. In response, I can make a forest on his side. And it doesn't seem relevant, but Gaius Leech is slowly ticking up in power toughness as well when I attack Frank. Because remember, when I attack, it has power toughness equal to the amount of basic forests that my opponent has. So if I'll attack, he now has two forests, it'll be a 2-2, which is not very big. But the more forests I make, you know, and that means an extra threat on the table. Uh, it looks like Frank is really in the tank at the moment. And I wonder what his one card is. He's probably thinking, should I attack or shouldn't I attack? And that is, I think I would attack because... Or is Frank so low on life? He is on four life. Okay, in that, in that case, I wouldn't attack. I would keep... I would keep my flying man home, I think. Let me know in, in the comments what you would do. I think I would keep him home just to block. Um, even though I have two ICs. The thing is, you, you want to play towards your side blast. Oh, this is actually pretty nice. This is pretty interesting, finding that book. In that case, I wouldn't attack at all. I just would try to shut the door down and, and, and hope to get card advantage with the book and maybe pull this game you know, uh, in, in, into, into his favor, um, into Frank's favor. I mean, he's on four. The, the thing is, I'm on six. He's playing with four side blasts. Remember, remember that. And I think he's only played one side blast so far. The thing with side blast, though, is that it's also dealing two damage to Frank. So, you know, he has to keep that in the back of his mind. He needs to have more than two lives. Uh, and of course, I'm also playing with, um, he's playing against a player who's playing with Lightning Bolt. So, so it's difficult. So declaring attacks here, tapping two of his, of his creatures. Um, and playing out a regrowth. Ooh, I can find a Sheevan Dragon here. Is that the way to go? Or should I find a Lightning Bolt and get him to one? I, I, I think, I mean, one is not really going to cut it for me, is it? Yeah, exactly. Just get the Sheevan. I've got just enough mana to play him out. Deploying the Shivan. And Frank will really need to find something with his book next turn. So the Flying Man is going to die. It has done its work. And Frank's top decking. This is quite an exciting game. Remember, he has that book he can still activate. He's got plenty of lands. If he can find a control magic, for example, he's playing three main, I believe. That would be really, really great for him right now. He can take my Sheevan. Tapping, drawing, okay, drawing a card. I thought he's tapping four. Maybe he's going to play it. Finding a Mishra's Factory. That's at least a blocker for the Gaius Leech. And I'm untapping. 
Also, of course, have that Mishra's factory as an extra body on the battlefield. Animating it, wanting to go to combat, and now Frank has to choose what he's going to tap. And this is how it kind of works with the IC manipulator. You say, I want to go to combat. Do you want to respond? And then you can use your IC. So it looks like Frank is stepping down Gas Leech and Sheevan Dragon. And am I changing? Because in, re in response, I can still use my Gas Leech. It looks like I'm not doing that. That is quite strange. Attacking here. So attacking with the factory and the cockatrice. Remember, Frank is... Okay, so he has to block. And there's a lightning bolt. That's it. That is the game. <laughs> Okay, that was an interesting ending. That lightning bolt changed the whole situation. And look, there still was an enchantment alteration. Kind of a dead card in this case in the hand of Frank. But that was quite an exciting game one. Um, nice. And of course, we have a game two to go. Possibly a game three. So uh, yeah, let's continue. Let's see what's going to happen in game number two. Game number two. And uh, I'm taking the lead here with that first game win. That means that Frank is probably going to choose to be on the play since he has a pretty aggressive deck. And uh, hopefully he can have an aggressive start as well because he couldn't really do that in, uh, in game one. So let's see if he can find uh, Flying Man, Surrender Befreed, kind of have an early start here. Because what I really want to do is just drag the game into mid-game, late-game so I can get my big threats out and I have all the mana that I need. And I think it's up to Frank to kind of finish the game before that. On the other hand, he does have Control Magic, Steel Artifact, so he definitely can do some stuff in the mid-game, a late-game as well. And with those side Blasts, he can always deal 4 damage out of nowhere. And let's see what he's going to do here. Um, Island, and there you go. Into a Flying Man, the 1-1 Flyer from Arabian Nights for some early pressure. Playing a Taiga here, passing turn. And playing a Factory, tapping Unstable on it. But there is the Lightning Bolt, and that means an easy 2-for-1. I would say a classic 2-for-1. It's, it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm not always a fan of Unstable. I understand what it can do. You know, you can deal a lot of damage if you play it right at the right time, etc., etc. But, you know, this is what can also happen. That you just have this two for one against you. Uh, played a Birds of Paradise and passed turn in the meanwhile. And now three mana for Frank. Is he going to attack with his 2-2? Possibly finding another Bolt or uh, a Crumble. Actually playing a Phantasmal Terrain, probably on the Taiga. Changing it into an Island. And I'm marking it with the Timmy Talks button there. And passing turn. Of course, I do have the Birds of Paradise to make any color of mana. So I still have red mana sources. Now I'm playing a basic uh, red. And interesting that I'm not tapping the Phantasmal Terrain land. I think that's kind of weird. But okay. Probably has no effect. But still, would have been better to... Keep another land untapped or possibly my um, Birds of Paradise, actually. I think that would have been the best play to just keep Birds of Paradise untapped here. Anyway, passing on. The turn, Frank's turn. Playing land drop number four. Tapping four, control magic. Taking my Birds of Paradise. And I mean, this is understandable because he has the enchantment alterations. He can always change target. And this is a much better target for that control magic, the Cockatrice. Remember, Cockatrice is also killable by a, um, by a side blast, and he's playing with four of those. So it's, it's not a huge threat, but it, it can be kind of a nuisance, definitely. There's an Unsummon on the Cockatrice. Probably going to swing in for two here, dealing two damage. I'm dropping to 18. And I don't think I've dealt any damage to Frank yet. He's still on 20 life. And look at how much land I have. There is another Cockatrice, or actually the Cockatrice he just unsummoned, followed by a Birds of Paradise. So there are a lot of flying birds, I guess, in this uh, in this game. And there's another Mishra's Factory. The problem with the Cockatrice, without the Cockatrice, he could just put some pressure on the board, but now he can't. And attacking here, probably going to take the two, dropping to 18. And there you go, there is a Gaius Leech. So that means I can start making those factories into forests. 
or I can choose to attack his blue mana base. He's tapping two, he's boomeranging. And oh, this is interesting, he's boomeranging his own control magic. And the nice thing now is if he decides to steal um, the Gaius Leech, the Gaius Leech is actually gonna die because Frank doesn't have any forests. He can also steal the Cockatrice, of course. So it's going to be interesting to see what he is actually going to do. I I mean, the thing is, with the Gaius Leech, he can start making the factories into forests. So you don't want that to happen, right? And he, he only has three blue, and a lot of spells cost two blue. So he doesn't want to lose two blue islands and get them turned into forests. On the other hand, you know, if he steals the Cockatrice, he kind of stops all the damage from happening. It's a 2-4, it's a very solid blocker. So it's it's a difficult it's a difficult decision. Let's see, at least tapping two, he's playing a boomerang instead. And he's gonna do something else. So he's gonna attack as well, animating. One of the factories pumping it up, so dealing three damage here. I'm dropping to 15 now. So he's not making the decision yet. I think this 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 is a smart plan because exactly if I attack with the cockatrice, I'm kind of opening up. Yeah, playing the Gaius Leech now. So he can steal the Gaius Leech if he wants to. Again, he has to now make the choice. He's postponed it a little bit. So he has to choose. Am I gonna steal the Gaius Leech? And then I can at least deal some damage. He is a little bit short on land as well at this point in the game. And he's, he's in the tank. Having three cards in hand, I'm having two cards in hand. And he's just passing turn here. Attacking with the Cockatrice, dropping to 14. And playing another man land, Mishra's Factory. Which is not great for Frank. So he's kind of like, he's in a situation. He wants to do something. Remember, he still has that control magic. I guess he's going to use it now. And what is he going to steal? He's actually going to steal the Gaius Leech. In response, I'm creating a forest on his side. And that is interesting. Because I'm doing this, I am keeping the Gaius Leech alive. So that means I probably have some kind of plan with the Gaius Leech. And there we see a flying man here by Frank. So this, I mean, if you're Frank, you should get suspicious now. Why am I saving my Gaius Leech? What's up with that? Ooh, playing a Chaos Orb. Probably want to flip on that Control Magic. So let's uh, let's put it in slow-mo here. Let's see if I can hit the Control Magic. Bam! And that is a solid hit. So that means the Control Magic's gone. And um, so that's, that's probably why, or that is why I kept the... Gaius Leech alive. So I've got it back. It does cost me um, my best removal card in the entire deck. And that's the Chaos Orb. And tapping even more. Another Gaius Leech. And now, ooh, I think, Frank, now you're in some serious trouble. Because next turn I can start making two forests at a time. Meaning that I can really start demolishing your mana base. I mean, you need something very, very powerful now. And I think Strip Mine is not going to cut it here. Yeah, you can take care of one of the threats. But it's hardly the biggest threat on the board at the moment. I mean, maybe if, yeah, it finds it unstable to make it a 4-4, swings in. But I can just sack one of my birds. I've got enough mana now at this stage of the game that I can just do that. So I do understand the idea behind this play, but it's not really going to help much. It would be interesting to see this deck maybe with a different rule set where you can also play Sea Singer with that Phantasmal. And changing two of his islands into forests. And I mean, that means he just has one basic island left. What can he really do? And also his Flying Man is taking a minus one, minus one counter every upkeep, or his upkeep. So it's now going to drop to a 3-3. Three, three. So we're discussing here the fact um, that when a Gaius Leech changes a forest, uh, a land into a forest, you need to indicate it by a counter. 
and when the Gaius Legion leaves play, all your forests that were turned into forests by that particular Gaius Leech turn back to their normal land. So in case of two Gaius Leeches, you need to mark which land is uh, changed by which Gaius Leech. So in this case, the blue counters are for the latest Gaius Leech. And it looks like he's attacking now just with a 2-2 and his 3-3 flyer. I mean, this is pretty much desperation here from, from Frank. There's not really much that he can do at this point. I mean, of course, he can be more passive. But the problem is with being passive at this stage is that I'm, I keep turning things into, into basic forest. So that's not really going to help him. There we see another cockatrice. I, I think this game is pretty much played. He needs a little bit of a miracle to get back here, finding a Surrendip. But again, those Surrendip of Freeze are just horrible against those uh, Cockatrices. Just zero use for him at this stage in the game. Um, I can also swing in with the Gas Leech because it's now a 5-5, five five, actually a 6-6, six six, and that's exactly what I'm going to do, turning in his last island into a forest, attacking here with a 6-6 six six Gas Leech and two Cockatrices of 2-4. And he's kind of probably going to chump block on the Gaius Leech. At least it's going to save him um, six damage. And buy him a little bit of time. He's got one more turn to go. And yeah, I think this is pretty much it. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. You see me say, okay, let's play the last... Uh, turn, you know, for the viewers, but uh, you know, this is it, and uh, yeah, nice. So, Frank, thank you very much uh, for these games, very interesting uh, to play. And I like the kind of the concept because it was actually Frank's idea who said, you know what, why don't we give each other a few cards to choose from, and then we have to build a deck around those cards. So, he actually gave me uh, three choices, including it was the Skull of Orm. Um, Gaius Leech, and there was a third option which I forgot. So I've, I've got it somewhere here on paper, but I don't own to have it with me. So I choose to go with the Gaius Leech. Um, also, because I knew my brother had a place set of beta Gaius Leeches, so I could borrow those from him. So I just was really excited in brewing with the Gaius Leech. And then I also gave uh, Frank a few options, which was Enchantment Alteration. Um, there was the Consecrated Land, I think. Was it Consecrated Land? Was it another one? It was e e e Equilibrium. It was the other one from Legend. So he could choose uh, Enchantment Alteration, Equilibrium, and he could ch um, choose um, Keldon Warlord. That's it. And he could choose Keldon Warlord. And he said himself, well, you know, I already have a Keldon Warlord deck. Or he had something in the making with Keldon Warlord. So he didn't want to choose that one. And then he went for Enchantment Alteration. Uh, I would really love to play against your Keldon Warlord deck, by the way, uh, uh, Frank, if you have that or if you're planning on, on uh, creating that one, because I love that card as well. Um, well, this is it. This was it for today's episode. Um, thank you for, for watching. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, by subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. Um, and also by commenting. So all the comments help. Well, all the comments, but you know, the nice... The nice constructive comments help. Thank you for that. I, I do seem to get a lot of spam comments lately uh, from bots. So I'm trying to, to find out how I can get rid of those. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching another episode. And by that, you are supporting Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, we also have a Patreon page where you can also support the channel financially. There's a link popping up right now. You can click on it. Check out how you can support Timmy Talks. It already starts at a single dollar. Um, I think that is it for now. Oh, it's actually not talking about Patreon and Patreon and the patrons. Let's go to the end scroll. Let's go to the patrons of Timmy Talks.
Sigurdus, 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 S